difficult at that age. Just, you know, you can't ever say that someone's going to go on and make it. It wasn't like it was, you know, once in a, in a blue moon that he was doing something special. He was, he was doing something special, you know, a dozen times in a, in a game. Jason was a, a quiet young lad. Didn't stand out in terms of his personality because he was quite a shy young fella. But, you know, once you gave him a rugby ball, it became something different. We're back in Leeds, um, Beeston, which is one of the areas that I grew up in. Probably one of the most deprived areas in Leeds. Sort of getting back here, sort of real, real mixed emotions. Um, just how my life as a, as a young lad was and growing up. Um, I mean, when you, when you look at sports, never knew anything about rugby union. Um, it wasn't mentioned around these streets. At times I was a little bit confused. You know, I have a, a white Scottish mother, two older white brothers, a white stepdad. So sometimes, you know, it was a case of, you know, where, where do I fit into all this? Never knew my father, only met him for the first time when I was 36. So it's quite a challenge. There's, there's lots of other memories that I have here. It's quite a tough area. You know, we didn't have much money. You know, me and my mates, we, I think we are going through a lot of stuff and there was a lot of, um, probably a lot of anger, a lot of, you know, a lot of emotions we didn't know how to deal with. So playing, playing rugby was a, just a great way to let off a bit of steam and, and, and get that discipline and, and feel that sense of belonging as a, as a team. So, you know, I started, you know, up on the fields up there, but there was something about it that I really enjoyed. I loved just getting that release. And, uh, you know, it was from there that I then joined the Hunslet Boys Club and, uh, you know, started to get into it a bit more seriously. The Hunslet Club was formed in 1940 as a boys club. It was formed during war years uh, by a local GP who recognised that whilst dads were away at war, young boys were on the street getting into mischief. And it doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, you know, they want you to come down, they want to look after you. and. Uh, this played a, a massive part in my life. I probably saw Jason when he was nine, ten years of age, you know, a very young lad. I was a young volunteer at the club then. Well, his speed immediately, the first thing you think about him is called Billy Wiz for a reason. And you can see the ones that stand out, and Jason was one of those. It was more a dream than anything else, and little did I know, you know, at the age of 16, you know, I would get turned down by Leeds Rhinos, who I, you know, my hometown club, I wanted to play for them. But, you know, six months after that, I get a call from the Wigan Scouts and I, I make that journey over to, over the other side to Lancashire. There couldn't have been a better proving ground, a better um, rugby club for me to learn. And as a result, you know, within the space of nine, ten years, won everything the game has to offer. I think 18 major trophies during that period. And then all of a sudden I, I have this call out the blue from some guy called Sir Clive Woodward. I mean, he, he achieved the top, didn't he? He won everything, everything from rugby league all the way through and then went into union. And, and the things that he's achieved are absolutely massive. And it's an inspiration for everybody else. I, I was out of contract at the end of the year, so I hadn't renewed my contract with Wigan. But again, just, just this phone call to say, look, Clive Woodward, you know, manager of the England team, rugby union, and we've been watching you. We feel that, you know, you could play a big part in this. And I've been in the game for a long time, won everything. But I think sometimes you've got to test yourself and, you know, by, by playing rugby union at, at, at that level, you know, it certainly was a challenge. 100% the best player sort of naturally gifted player that I've, that I've ever played with. He was such a big name already in, in rugby league. You know, he'd, he'd played for Great Britain. He'd obviously pretty much won everything he could have won as a rugby league player, but still at such a young age when he came over to, to Union. Once you find what you love, you just got to go for it. You know, you got to make a lot of sacrifices. The problem is a lot of people want it, but they're not prepared to make the sacrifices. If you're prepared to do that, then there's no reason why you can't. Don't let anybody tell you that you're not good enough, you're not big enough. Because if I'd have listened to them, then you know I wouldn't have done anything in life. And uh, you know, I'm so glad I didn't because you know I've had a one hell of a journey. For me, it just sums up the power of sport because 
you know, when you look at the start, nobody would have ever thought that I'd go on to do what I did. So I'm so grateful for all the help that I got, you know, at a young age. And, and then to go on this whirlwind of a journey through two different sports, three World Cup finals, you know, three Lions tours, Premiership titles, super, you know, it, it's, the list is, is, is almost endless. So I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of it. And, uh, and I, I do feel a little bit lucky that it happened to me. I'm not sure why it did, but I feel very blessed.